Hey everybody, Al here, and welcome to another episode of Al's Vintage Toy Trains. And today I wanted to go over a couple of sets. I purchased these two sets from the original owner back in 2018 from Maryland, and wanted to kind of go over how I identified the two sets and what years they were made, and the references that I used. So references are always handy. And I've got a few here to show you. And let's go ahead and uh, proceed with uh, ways of how to identify and date the sets. And the names of the sets or the numbers of the sets or the catalog numbers. So I'll start off with the upper train. So we have here a 2056 engine. It's a Hudson type engine along with a 2046 W tender. Uh, it's got the gondola, it's got the double dome tank car, Sunoco tank car. We've got the Lehigh Valley hopper car and an SP type caboose, number 6257. And one of my go-to references, and anybody that's getting into the hobby uh, of collecting pre-war, post-war, even modern trains, uh, should have a few references uh, to help you out. And... One of those references is the Greenberg's Guide to Lionel Trains. Every year they come out with a new one, and basically it is cataloged into three sections. It's got a pre-war section, post-war section, which are the thinnest two sections, followed by the what they call the modern section. So pre-war is pretty much 1900 to 1941, 42. Post-war is 1945 to 1969, and then 1970 and later is considered modern era. So I typically get a new, a new guide every couple of three years, and I do happen to have the, the 2022 version. And so the first thing I'll do is I'll look up the engine. I mean, I pretty much know... You know what year the engine is made based on the catacomb uh, the the catalog number of the engine so the engine is 2056 and i'll go ahead and look it up here and let's see 2056 is a 464 hudson and it comes with a 2046w tender and here it says 1952 only Shows a good price or value of $70 and in excellent shape, 181 So that is with both the engine and tender, and that's how it works with the steam engines. So that gives you a value range. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean what you're going to pay. Uh, you may pay a little more, you may pay a little less, depending on condition and how it is sold, if it's retail or... If you purchase it from an estate sale or whatnot, you're probably going to get it less. But then uh, you don't know what you're getting unless uh, you look a little more closely at uh, the engine and the condition and knowing whether it's going to run or not. So, 1952. So, I know that this set is most likely from 1952. And so, we'll go ahead and look at the next uh, reference that I have. And this one's Doyle's. It's, uh, it's a book that lists out all the catalog sets that Lionel made post-war era. I find it kind of handy. And I've already got it place marked, so I'm going to go ahead and let's go to 1952. And in this, in this catalog or book... I know that there's three sets that came with the 2056. So my set is the 1479 WS. The WS within the set number typically depicted the fact that it had a whistle tender for the W and the S stood for a smoke. So this particular set would have had an engine with a whistle and smoke. All right, there were two other sets that, uh, that also had the uh, 2056. So there's this set here, the 1483 WS. 
and they also had a passenger set that came with the 2056. So I know I don't have either of those based on the cars that are in it. And so looking at the 1479 WS, I know that it comes with the 2056 engine and the 2046 W streamlined whistle tender. It comes with the 6462 gondola, the 6465 Sunoco double dome tank car, even though it's not in the photo. And it also comes with the 6257 SP type caboose. It came with track, it came with a lock on, it came with a bottle of smoke pellets. Uh, it also, uh, let's see, it mentions here the 2046 lost its magnet traction in 52, so this is kind of unique to that year. Uh, this is during the Korean War, and a lot of the engines were cataloged slightly differently. Uh, in this case, this is basically a 2046 engine minus the, uh, the magnet traction that they came with. So they renumbered the engine to 2056 to denote that. So uh, it's unique to uh, 1952 only. They've also done that with the uh, turbine. The 671 was the number they used in 52. In 51, it was a 681 with the magnet traction. Uh, they also did that with the 736 going to 726 and 52. Uh, again, lack of uh, magnet traction. And with the turbine and the Berkshire, uh, most of the time they also had an RR underneath the, uh, the 671 or 726. So that specifically denotes that it was 52 and not the uh, earlier versions from 1946 to 1949. So, so this reference is really good. I think I've identified the set here. And then lastly, what I'll do is... I always have the catalogs to reference, and so here is uh, the set in the 1952 catalog, and we can see that this set was $49.95, and it lists out everything that came with it. Uh, this set also came with a 1033 transformer, it's a 90 watt transformer, and uh, Lionel gave uh, these two sets, a full two-page two spread in the catalog. So the artwork is quite good and uh, a nice depiction of the set. So there we have the top set that I had on the uh, shelf here. The second set is a turbine and uh, a passenger set. So Again, I can do the same thing going through the pocket guide. I can look at the pocket guide and then knowing that the 671 was made between 1946 and 1949, um, that narrows things down. But also with the passenger cars, when I look up the number on the passenger cars, these passenger cars or grain cars were made in 1948 and 1949 only. So... So that narrows down the search for looking for the uh, the set. So I can go back to my Doyle's reference guide here. And, uh, and if I go to the 1949 section, now what I didn't mention, uh, when I go back to the reference and I look up 671 post-war, uh, gives me a a little bit of a description and it, and it really helps out in the fact that uh, the turbines were different for each year so so here's my reference and if I look at the 671 and I go down to here um, let's see so thin nickel rims 2671W tender, no backup light lenses, that's 1948. Uh, no rims on drivers is 1949. So I look a little more closely and I look at the uh, the drivers. Uh, in this case, there's no, there's no rims on any of the drivers. So previous to 1949, there were. So this, this pretty much tells me that uh, this is a 1949 set. I don't have the boxes, so 
1948 would have had the three city boxes. 1949 would have just the two city boxes. So that's one of the differences with the boxes, but I don't have the boxes. So looking specifically at the turbine, I can tell that uh, this is a 1949 turbine, and most likely the set was 1949. Just like the set above was 1952. The owner couldn't remember exactly what years he had received these as a kid, but uh, I was able to tell him after the fact uh, the years. Uh, both sets were in pretty decent shape. Pretty close to excellent, I would say. Um, needed a little work, uh, like many of these trains uh, the insulation on some of the wiring gets very brittle and hard so with the uh, illuminated passenger cars I had to replace the uh, the wiring uh, same thing with the tender so typically when I get something that old uh, that's 70 to 80 years old uh, I will typically replace the wiring because it is brittle and uh, when the insulation cracks, you can get shorting when the uh, the wire touches the frame of the uh, the tender. And the same thing with the illuminated passenger cars. So, so again, the reference helped me out a lot as far as uh, dating the set. So I know that because of the, uh, the no rims on the drivers, this is a 1949 set. And then I always like the uh, the catalogs because they give a pretty cool description. Uh, again, uh, this particular set is the middle set within the 1949 catalog, and uh, the artwork is quite quite good. And then the description it tells you uh, basically the 671 steam turbine is part of the set, along with the 2671. You know, it's a streamlined tender, uh, and then the 2400 series illuminated cars. Note that uh, each of the cities are uh, are names of those cities near uh, Lionel's factory. So they're all from New Jersey. And uh, one of my favorite sets, uh, the 2140 WS. Again, the WS standing for uh, whistle and smoke. And this set went for $57.75. So... Uh, there you have it. There's uh, some great references uh, between the Doyles, the, the Greenberg's price guide, the actual catalogs themselves. And then uh, I'll just briefly go over some other catalogs and references that I have and uh, helps to identify, uh, you know, specifics of different trains from Lionel. So here's a Doyle's. Lionel Trains, 1949 to 1969. Pretty much it's a description of all the uh, the various engines and rolling stock that was made during the post-war era. And it goes through with the, uh, the different variations. And uh, I think it's a pretty decent uh, reference. Uh, Doyle's also makes one for pre-war trains. Again... A lot of times uh, you'll find things uh, at an estate sale or whatever, and uh, it's always good to kind of reference what it is you're looking at and uh, dating it and uh, figuring out what it is that you have. Got other Greenberg's guides. So here's their 1949 to 69 volume one of rolling stocks so, and motive power. So goes through the different variations of engines and rolling stock. Kind of like the Doyles, uh, came out before Doyles. Um, a good reference. Greenberg's has the accessories for pre-war. Another good reference. And again, I'm just kind of giving you some of the highlights here of some of the ones that I have. There are other uh, references out there. Uh, here's post-war accessories from Greenberg's. And then uh, selected variations. Uh, a good bit of history right here about Lionel, uh, a good read, uh, tells you a lot about Joshua Lionel Cowan and, uh, how he founded, uh, Lionel and, uh, pretty neat little, uh, bit of information in this book. And then some others that I've picked up, uh, 
Tom McComas and James Tui. Uh, I've got several volumes of these. And again, just uh, generally decent uh, references to have. And uh, there's even uh, a collector's guide and history on advertising and art. So Lionel was really good with their artwork and how they displayed their products. And uh, a lot of a lot of money was probably invested in that in order to promote the company, which at one point was the largest toy manufacturer in the world in the early 50s. So, And if, you f if you're into collecting trains like I am, you got to have the uh, Greenberg's Repair and Operating Manual. So this is a great reference for when you're repairing. Tells you the parts, uh, gives you exploded views of everything. Um, really a good reference. Uh, give you some uh, tips as well and then it's all broken out by uh, by catalog number so table of contents will list the uh, the locomotives and motorized units first uh, and then followed by accessories uh, there's even one specific on the electronic train set that Lionel made in the 40s uh, transformers etc so it's my go-to reference whenever I'm working on a transformer or working on an engine, etc. And uh, also lists out the uh, the part numbers, uh, which is helpful when you're ordering new parts. And let's see, got a TCA publication here. And again, that's all pre-war and a good little reference. So, so there you have it. I'm not really promoting anybody's uh, references, but uh, for me, this is what I use, which helps me identify what I've got for sets when they were made, and uh, sometimes uh, referring to the references, sometimes there's some scarce and, and rare items that you can uh, come across at times. I did find that with a uh, 2143 WS outfit uh, that was made in 1948, and the reference mentioned that... Uh, uh, it's scarce, but sometimes you'll find uh, a turbine with the 2671W tender that came with a backup light. So that's something that Lionel tried when they first came out with the uh, Streamline Pennsylvania tender. And uh, this one's the 49 version, but I do have the 48 version. Uh, and only the early uh, variants of that 48 version came with the uh, backup light. I guess Lionel thought that uh, the backup light wasn't much play value for what uh, they were putting into it for money. So, well, there you have it. And uh, I appreciate you watching. And thank you.